During the Revolutionary War, Captain Vesey of Charlestown was engaged in supplying the French in St. Domingo with slaves from St. Thomas. In the year of 1781, he purchased Denmark, a boy of about 14 years of age, and afterwards brought him to Charlestown, where he proved for 20 years a faithful slave. In 1800, Denmark drew a prize of $1,500 in the lottery and purchased his freedom from his master for $600. From that period until the time of his arrest, he worked as a carpenter and was distinguished for his great strength and activity and was always looked up to by those of his own color with awe and respect. In 1822, Denmark Vesey formed a plan for the liberation of his fellow men from bondage. In the whole history of human efforts to overthrow slavery, a more complicated and tremendous plan was never formed. A part of the plan matured was that on Sunday night, the 16th of June, a force would cross from James Island and land on South Bay and march up and seize the arsenal and guardhouse. Another body at the same time would seize the arsenal on the neck and the third would rendezvous in the vicinity of the mills of Denmark's master. They then would sweep through the town with fire and sword, not permitting a single white soul to escape. The sum of this intelligence was laid before the governor, who convening the officers of the militia, took such, such measures as were deemed the best adapted to the approaching ex exigency of Sunday night. <laughs> On the 16th, at 10 o'clock at night, the military companies, which were placed under the command of Colonel R.Y. Hayne, were ordered to rendezvous for God. The conspirators, finding the whole town in compass at 10 o'clock by the most vigilant patrols, did not dare show themselves whatever might have been their plans. In the progress of the subsequent investigation, it was distinctly in proof that, but for these military demonstrations, the effort would unquestionably have been made that a meeting took place on Sunday afternoon, the 16th at four o'clock of several of the ringleaders at Denmark Vesey's for the purpose of making the preliminary arrangements. And at that early in the morning of Sunday, Denmark dispatched a carrier to order down some country Negroes from Goose Creek, which carrier had endeavored in vain to get out of the town. The conspirators, it was ascertained, had held meetings for four years without being betrayed. The leaders were careful to instruct their followers, not to mention their plans, to those waiting men who received presents of old coats and etc. from their masters. And such slaves would be likely to betray them. Denmark Vesey was betrayed by the treachery of his own people and died a martyr to freedom. The slave who gave information of the projected insurrection was purchased by the legislature, who hold out to the other slaves the strongest possible motives to do likewise in similar cases by giving him his freedom. The number of blacks arrested was 131. Of these, 35 were executed, 41 acquitted, and the rest sentenced to be transported. Many a brave hero fell, but history, faithful to her high trust, will engrave the name of Denmark Vesey on the same monument with Moses, Hamden, Tell, Bruce, Wallace, Toussaint, Lafayette, and Washington.